Think of a book that mentions about a fact that science was able to discover only 100 years ago, more than 1400 years ago. Think of a man that mentions about a fact that science was able to discover only recently, more than 1400 years ago. Could anyone doubt that this book is a divine book and this person is an extraordinary person? The Quran mentions more than 1400 years ago that the universe was expanding. The following is stated in verse 47 of the chapter of Ez Zariyat. With, With the power and skill, and skill did, we did we construct the firmament, the firmament. For, it for it is we, we who, create who create the vastness, the vastness of, space. of space. The Arabic phrase, Ina le Musiyun means we are expanding it. The word musiyun is derived from the verb el sao, to expand. The letter lam, el, at the beginning of this word is used to emphasize the noun or the adjective it precedes, and it means a lot or very much. Accordingly, this phrase means we are expanding the universe a lot. After analyzing the verse of the Quran, informing us about the expansion of the universe, we will examine what science says about it. There was only one view that prevailed regarding the issue up to the beginning of the 20th century. This view stated that the universe had a static structure and that it has existed like that since the beginning of the universe. No scientist mentioned the expansion of the universe until the 20th century, let alone mentioning no one even imagined it. At the beginning of the 20th century, Russian physicist Alexander Friedman and Belgian cosmologist George Lemaitre calculated theoretically that the universe was moving continuously and expanding. This fact was proven through observation in 1929. While examining the sky through a giant telescope, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered that stars and galaxies continuously moved away from one another. Stars and galaxies moved away not only from us, but also from one another. In the following years, it became certain through observations that the universe was expanding. A universe in which everything continuously moves away from one another means a universe that is continuously expanding. In order to understand the expansion of the universe better, we can think as follows. Suppose that the universe is the surface of an inflated balloon. The points on the phone move away from one another. Similarly, the objects in the universe move away from one another as the universe expands. When this scientific fact was not known by anyone and when people thought that the sun was as small as an apple, the Quran mentioned this fact centuries ago and it stated clearly that the universe was expanding. This clearly proves that the Quran is Allah's word. That a scientific fact which was discovered only in the 20th century existed in a book 14 centuries ago and that this fact was informed by a person who could not read nor write can be possible only through one of the following two ways. 1. A human being discovered this scientific fact on his own. 2. This fact was expressed by Allah, who created the universe and is expanding it. The book in which this fact is written is the book of Allah, and the person who conveyed this message is his messenger. There is no other alternative and it is not possible to accept the second alternative. 
for it is not possible for an illiterate person living in a period 14 centuries ago when there were no telescopes to discover on his own a fact that could be discovered only through giant telescopes therefore the greatest geniuses in the history of the world could not draw the model of the expanding universe despite their observations and scientific studies they could not even imagine it then this information cannot be the word of an illiterate person who lived in the desert 14 centuries ago when there was no technology the book that contains this information cannot have been written by him then there is only one alternative left to accept the second option that is this information was given by Allah who created the universe and is continuously expanding it and who sent this miraculous information to people through his messenger Hazrat Muhammad peace be upon him and the book that contains this information is his book if someone said he may have written in coincidentally that is the Quran is the word of a human and this human being wrote this fact in his book without being aware of it and mentioned the expansion of the universe we would say millions of books have been written since that century if it had been possible for a human being to write this fact coincidentally in his books the same fact would have occurred in some other books coincidentally however it is just the opposite this fact was not mentioned in any of the books written by human beings and even in the books of genius astronomers up until the 20th century this fact was not thought about by anyone and it was not written in any books we cannot attribute the fact that this information was given by the Quran to coincidence therefore it is impossible to say anything other than the Quran is the book of Allah only one alternative is possible the Quran is the book of Allah The issue of how the universe came into being has always been one of the issues that scientists wondered about and discussed most. Many theories were put forward regarding the issue throughout history. Each theory was refuted in the course of time as science advanced and they were labeled as wrong. The theory that is agreed on and is widely accepted today is the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang is a cosmological model claiming that the universe came into being 13.7 billion years ago from an excessively intense and hot point. It was first put forward in 1920 by Russian cosmologist and mathematician Alexander Friedman and Belgian physicist Georges Lemaitre. This theory, which assumes that the universe had a beginning, has widely been accepted by scientists, especially by physicists, because it is supported by various evidence. According to the Big Bang model, the universe was in a very intense and hot state in its first phase before expansion. That is, the universe was all in one piece. Then it was separated into pieces to take its current shape with a big explosion called the Big Bang. This knowledge, 
which scientists were able to obtain only within the 19th century, was informed by the Quran 1400 years ago. The following is stated in verse 30 of the chapter of Al-Anbiya. Do not, Do not the, unbelievers the unbelievers see that the heavens, that the heavens and, the and the earth were joined, were joined together, together as one as unit one of creation? creation. Before, Before we clothed them, them asunder, asunder. We, made we made from water, from water every, every living, living thing. thing. Will they, Will not, they not then believe? believe? The word translated as joined together in the verse is the Arabic word ratk. It means fused, coherent, inseparable. That is, this word is used in order to describe two substances that form a whole in Arabic. The verb fatk used in the verse means to separate. In Arabic, this verb is used in the sense of splitting something that is adjacent and coming out by breaking something. For instance, this verb is used when a seed sprouts and comes out of the ground in Arabic. Now, let us go back to the verse. In the verse, a situation in which two things are joined together, ratk, is mentioned. Then they are separated, fatk. That is, one of them comes out by tearing the other one. When we think of the first moment of the Big Bang, we see that the whole matter of the universe was together in one substance. In other words, everything, even the skies and the earth that had not been created yet, was within the same substance, interbeated, ratk, and inseparable. That is, they were joined together as it is stated in the verse. Then this substance broke into pieces through a big explosion. That is, the deed that the Quran defines as fatk took place. The Quran informs us about the Big Bang Theory, which was discovered in the last century more than 1,400 years ago. Anyone who thinks impartially and justly will accept this. A human being who could not read or write could not have discovered this fact 1,400 years ago. Can a human being have discovered a fact on his own 1,400 years ago? that scientists discovered only 100 years ago. Since it is impossible, there is only one alternative left. The book that mentions this fact is the Book of Allah, who collected the whole realms in one substance and who created the earth, the sky, and everything within them through a Big Bang after that. Yes, the Quran is the pre-eternal book of that being. We believe in it. Verse 22 of the chapter of Al-Hijr of the Quran gives us the following news 1400 years ago when the importance and meaning of fecundating was not known. And we, and send, we send the fecundating, the fecundating winds. winds. Yes, this verse clearly states that winds have a fecundating property. What do scientists say about this news given by the Quran? Let us find out. Scientists state that winds have a fecundating property as follows. There are male and female elements in the flowers of all plants. 
fruits occur when the male element fecundates the female. This fecundation takes place thanks to wind. Allah created the seeds of many plants so light as to fly in the presence of even a very light breeze. Pollens, dusts and seeds of innumerable plant species are carried from one plant to another through winds. Thus, the plants reproduce through fecundation and their generations are ensured to continue. That is, plants reproduce thanks to the fecundating property of winds. Apart from fecundating plants, winds also fecundate rain clouds to make rain fall down. Until recent times, it was thought that the only relationship between wind and rain was that winds dragged rain clouds. Yes, it was something that could be seen by anyone who watched the movement of the clouds. However, the relationship between wind and rain was not only this. Air bubbles called aerosols form on the surface of seas and other waters due to foaming. They mix with the dust that winds drag from the land and fly toward the upper layers of the atmosphere. These particles, raised by winds, combine with water vapor and the water vapor condenses around these particles. If it were not for these particles, 100% water vapor could not form clouds. Clouds form when winds fecundate the free water vapor in the air with the particles they carry. After these explanations of science and scientists, let us analyze the issue and find answers to the following questions. 1. When was it discovered that winds had a fecundating property? Answer. It was discovered in the 20th century. 2. Is it possible for a person who could not read nor write to discover this fact 1400 years ago? that which was only discovered in the 20th century? Answer. It is impossible. Only an insane person can claim that it is possible. 3. How can it be explained that the fact that winds have the property of fecundating is mentioned in the Quran if it is not accepted that the Quran is the word of Allah? Answer. It cannot be explained in any way. If the Quran is not accepted to be the word of Allah, neither this information given by the Quran nor any of the other scientific facts can be explained. There are two ways. To accept that a human being who could not read or write knew and discovered 14 centuries ago on his own that winds have the property of fecundating and all of the other scientific facts stated by the Quran or to say, the Quran is the book of Allah. All of the news within it is the word of Allah. There is no other possibility. No sane person can accept the first probability, for it is impossible for a human being to know and discover them on his own. Then there is nothing else to do but to accept the second possibility. This book is the book of Allah, who is Alam al Guyub, the knower of all unseen and unknown things. Yes, this book belongs to the same person who created winds and gave them the duty of fecundating. Everything within this book belongs to him. We believe in and accept it. Before looking at the scientific miracle which will be discussed in this proof, 
we want to give some information about the Arabic language. With the help of this information, the scientific miracle to analyze will be understood better. The words in the Arabic language are divided into two categories in terms of gender. The words that are used for female beings are called Mu'unes, feminine. The words that are used for male beings are called Muzikr, masculine. In Arabic language, things are either Mu'unes, feminine, or Muzikr, masculine, whether they are animals, plants, objects, or verbs. So, in Arabic, Verbs are also divided into two as female or male. When the doer of a sentence is male, the verb is conjugated as masculine, and when the doer of the sentence is female, the verb is conjugated as feminine. That is, there is coherence between the verb and doer in terms of gender. After this information, now let us pay attention to the verses 68 and 69 of the chapter of An-Nal. And thy Lord taught the bee to build its cells in hills, on trees, and in men's habitations. Then to eat of all the produce of the earth, and find with skill the spacious paths of its Lord. There issues, there issues from within from their, their bodies, bodies a drink, a drink of varying, varying colors, colors wherein, wherein is, healing is healing for men. For men. Verily, Verily in this, in this is, a is a sign for those who, who give thought. thought. In Arabic, the B is written as Nal, in the same way both for male and female. This word has no feminine form. However, the Quran uses the feminine form of the verb when it gives information about the inspiration which is given to the bee and what the bee does. As we have mentioned before, verbs in the Arabic language are conjugated in different ways according to the gender. This is also valid in many other languages of the world. When what the bee does is narrated in the Quran, the verb is conjugated in the feminine form it is as follows. 1. In the verse, in order to express the meaning make habitation, the word itahaz, which is used for the feminine, is preferred instead of itahazi, which is used for the masculine. 2. In order to express the meaning eat of all fruits, the word of kyul, which is used for the feminine, is preferred instead of kuli, which is used for the masculine. 3. In order to express the meaning, follow the ways of your Lord, the word of yuslik, which is used for the feminine, is preferred instead of yusluki, which is used for the masculine. 4. The pronoun there in the sentence, there comes forth from their bellies, is expressed with the word hu, which refers to the feminine, instead of the word ha, which refers to the masculine. So, the deeds which are mentioned by the Quran as making habitation, that is, building the honeycomb, eating of all fruits in order to collect the nectar, following the ways of Allah, which is inspired and giving the honey from bellies, are performed by the female bee. That is, the doer of all deeds here is the female bee. So what do scientists say about this news given 1400 years ago? Are all of these listed works performed by the female bee really? Now, listen to the words of scientists on this subject and hear what they say. They say that all deeds that the Quran mentions are performed by worker bees, which are female bees. There is no connection with the deeds which are mentioned by the Quran and the male bees. 
the sole duty of male bees that have huge eyes and have a larger form than the female worker bees is to ensure reproduction with the young queen. Male bees that accomplish this task at the end of summer are thrown out of the honeycomb and die soon as they are accustomed to living with the nursing of female bees. As you see, the news of the Quran and the fact science has found in this century is one and the same. This fact, which has been discovered by science recently, but which has been informed by the Quran 1400 years ago, is a miraculous news of the Quran. However, it was impossible for the people to know the division of labor in the honeycomb at the time of the revelation of the Quran. The people of that time did neither know what the worker bees were female nor that the works of building the comb and producing honey were performed by female worker bees. However, the Quran informed this and the news turned out to be true as it was informed. Is there other way than accepting the Quran is the book of Allah in the face of this great miracle of the Quran which amazes people? The Quran is the book of the being who inspires the bee and prepares the honey in its belly. He let the honey be prepared by the female bee, inspired it, and informed this in his book centuries ago. Yes, the Quran is the book of Allah and his eternal speech. We believe in it and accept it. When we observe the universe through the naked eye, we think there is a non-unmoving universe. The immense activities in the universe started to be noticed only after the invention of the telescope. In a very long period of history, people thought the world was not moving and that the sun rotated around the world. Then, in the process that started with Copernic, Kepler, and Galileo, they discovered that the Earth rotated around the Sun, which remained fixed. This discovery, which is regarded as a revolution, was very important, but it had not yet been discovered that the Sun moved on its own orbit. Then, thanks to the advanced telescopes and the development of science, it was understood that the world rotated around the Sun, which also moved. The Sun moved at a speed faster than 720,000 kilometers per hour with the planets around it toward the star Vega on an orbit called the solar apex. This fact, which was discovered only in the last century, was stated by the Quran 1400 years ago. And the, and the sun, sun runs, runs his, course his course for a period, period determined, determined for him, for him. That, is that is the decree, the decree of, him, of him, the exalted, the exalted in might, might, the all-knowing. All -knowing. It is not it is permitted not to the sun to catch up the moon, nor can the night outstrip the day. Each just swims along in its own orbit, according to law. It is he who created the night and the day, and the sun and the moon. All the celestial bodies swim along each in its rounded course. As we can see it, the Quran stated 1400 years ago that the sun and the stars moved. This proves that the Quran is the word of Allah. The Quran attracts attention to another scientific discovery about the movements of the sun through another verse. The following is stated in verse 5 of the chapter of As-Safat. 
the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and what is between them, and Lord of the Easts. It is understood from the phrase, the Lord of the Easts, that the sun had more than one rising point. It attracts attention to the fact that the East, which we know as the rising place of the sun, needs to be thought as places, that is, more than one East. Yes, the sun rises every morning and sets every evening. However, these risings and settings take place in a different part of the universe each time. That is, the stars and the planets that float in the sea of the sky do not pass from the same route again. They move on their orbits. The sun, which rises in a place, sets in another place at the same time since the world is round. The night follows the day and the day follows the night. Then the rising places of the sun, not the rising place, is in question. The morning time is different for every point of the globe. Every place waits for the sun to rise at a different hour, minute and second. We watch the sun rise from different places of space. The sun is the same sun, the world is the same world, but the place in space is different. Now, let us ask some questions about these two miracles of the Quran. 1. Can the fact that the sun and the stars moved, something stated by the Quran 1400 years ago, was approved by scientists be interpreted as anything but as the Quran is the word of Allah who created the skies, determined routes there and made the sun and stars move on that route. 2. Is it possible for a person who lived 1400 years ago and who could not read nor write to discover a fact that was rejected by many scientists who lived before the last century? and that was discovered only in the last century, which was a century of science and technology. Why should Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, make these claims and risk his credibility by opposing the people of that century in a period when almost all of the knowledge about the sky was wrong and superstitious, and when people did not have anything like that on the agenda? All of these questions can only be answered by the fact that the Quran is the book of Allah. If it is accepted that the Quran is the word of a human being, hundreds of questions will arise. In that case, no scientific fact stated by the Quran can be explained. The only answer to this question that can persuade the heart and the mind is as follows. The Quran is the pre-eternal book of Allah and His address to humanity. Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, is Allah's messenger and beloved slave. We believe in it. He has, he has let free, let free the, two the two bodies of flowing, of flowing water, water meeting, meeting together. together. Between, Between them is a barrier, is a barrier which, which they do, they not, do transgress. not transgress. The expression of the verse has a mind-blowing style. For the verse informs us that the seas do not mingle with one another despite all storms and huge waves. Yes. Science confirms the verses of the Quran as it always has been and proves that it is the word of Allah. It is as follows. The French marine scientist, Captain Jacques Cousteau, who is famous for underwater research, explains the results of his investigations about water barriers as follows. 
we were investigating of some researchers' judgments that put forth that there were some barriers that separated different masses of the seas from each other. As a result of various studies, we saw that the Mediterranean Sea has a peculiar natural level of salinity and density. At the same time, it has specific life forms. Then we analyzed the mass of water in the Atlantic Ocean and saw that it was completely different than the Mediterranean Sea. However, these two seas, which merge at the Strait of Gibraltar, were supposed to be equal or at least near to equal in terms of salinity, density, and life forms that they had. However, these two seas have different structures even in places where they converge closely. Upon our investigations, we came across an event that amazed us. There was a great water curtain at the merging point that did not allow these two seas to mix. The same kind of water barrier was found by German scientists at Bab al-Mandab, where waters of Gulf of Aden and Red Sea converge in 1962. In our later investigations, we witnessed the existence of the same kind of barrier in all merging points of seas that have different characteristics. This amazing fact, which amazed Captain Cousteau about the waters that do not mix up though seas converge, is explained with the following verse in the Quran 14 centuries ago. He has, he let, has free let free the two, the two bodies, bodies of flowing, of flowing water, water, water meeting, meeting together. together. Between, Between them, them is a barrier, is a barrier which, they which they do they not do transgress. Not transgress. Another kind of water barrier on Earth is seen at bays and deltas, where the freshwater rivers flow into the seas. Rivers that have the utmost possibility of mixing into one another because of their surface and bottom currents never mix with salty water in places where they fall into seas. If Allah did not put the law of not mixing up between these two waters, the fresh water rivers on earth would mix up with the salty seawater and the living creatures within them and their environments would be annihilated altogether. The Quran attracts attention to the miracle of this not mixing of these fresh and salty waters in another verse as follows. It is he who has let free the two bodies of flowing water one palatable and sweet, and the other salt and bitter. Yet has he made a barrier between them, a partition that is forbidden to be passed. Yes, the fact that the seas do not mix with each other and the fresh water rivers do not mix with salty waters shows the infinite power of Allah. It's being expressed 1400 years ago in the Quran proves that the Quran is the word of Allah. For it is impossible to base this information on a man's personal discovery who lived at that age. It is also impossible to base it on all people's discovery who lived at that age. It is impossible for a man to discover and write a truth that science has discovered only in this age, on his own, 14 centuries ago. Therefore, the Quran cannot be the word of man. It is the pre-eternal word of Allah, who is the creator of lands and skies. the miraculous news of the Quran about the formation of underground waters. The verses of the Quran about the falling of rain and the place of water in our lives gives us true information. If we were to live in another period of history, 
we would not be able to understand this information. Since the cyclic process of waters in the world has been exposed in detail nowadays, we can easily understand the information about waters in the verses of the Quran. When we compare the old information about waters and the related verses of the Quran, we see that the Quran presents the truest information about waters just like any other subject without including the wrong information of the old ages. However, does this information, which is well known for us, can be known in any other ages of history so clearly? Let us see the views of the philosophers who are considered to be the most important philosophers and geniuses in the history about the cyclic process of water before showing the scientific information and the trueness of the verses of the Quran. Thales of Milutus explains the reason of the existence of underground waters as follows. The waters of the ocean that gushed out in the air by the pressure exerted by winds blowing from the depths of continents fell back down, penetrating the earth. That is, according to the Thales of Milutus, underground waters occur as a result of the overflowing of oceans due to winds. Plato shared this view and believed that its return to the ocean was caused by a huge whirlpool. Aristotle contended that the vapor that rose from the earth condensed in the cool recesses of mountains, forming subterranean lakes and spring waters that were fed by these lakes. Yes, these views that made you laugh belong to philosophers who were the most intelligent people of their ages. The first significant discovery of water's perpetual cycle and the formation of underground waters was by Bernard Palissy in 1580. According to him, underground waters were formed by the penetration of rainwater into the earth. R. Riemannieris, who is the author of the article of Water Information of Encyclopedia Universalis, gives the following information. The concepts of purely philosophical character about the natural phenomena related to waters had to wait until the Renaissance in order to yield their places to impartial observations. However, the Quran gives the information that underground waters form as a result of the penetration of rainwater into the earth ages ago, in a time when there were no signs or techniques. Seest thou, thou not, not that Allah, Allah sends, down sends down rain from, from the, sky the sky and leads and it leads through springs, springs in, the in the earth? The information of the Quran about the formation of the underground waters as a result of the penetration of rainwater into the earth, clearly stated 14 centuries ago, was put forth in Europe in the 16th century, and only at that time they were able to oppose Aristotle. If the Quran is not accepted as the Book of Allah after this information, how can the trueness of this news of the Quran be explained? How was this ecological information, which could not be discovered by so many intelligent philosophers, discovered by an illiterate person 14 centuries ago? Attributing this information to the discovery of an illiterate person who lived at that age could only be possible by insanity. Then the Quran is the word of Allah, who brings the water from skies and lets it be absorbed by the underground springs and informs us about this miraculous news 1400 years ago.
See they not that we gradually reduce the land in their control from its outlying borders. See they not that we gradually reduce the land in their control from its outlying borders. These two verses of the Quran mention that the surface of earth has been reduced and diminished from its outlying borders. Has the surface of earth been reducing from its outlying borders, really? What can be the meaning of this reducing? What do scientists say about the subject? According to the information of NASA, while the Earth's equatorial radius is 6,378.5 kilometers, its polar radius is 6,357. This means a difference of 0.3 percent. Here, there is an indication of this flattening at poles with the following statements from the Quran. We reduce the land from its outlying borders and we diminish the land from its outlying borders. Besides, we also point out to the following issue that there is a statement in the verse as we gradually reduce instead of we reduced. From this statement, we understand that the process of reducing still continues. If there were a statement within the verse as we reduced, we could understand that the earth was created in the same shape as it is today. The statement, we gradually reduce, informs us about a formation after a definite process. That is, reducing is still continuing. The following two points which stem from this verse of the Quran are in complete conformity with the discoveries of the creation of earth. 1. There is a reducing at the edges of the earth. In fact, the earth is flattened at poles and bulges at the equator. This reducing still continues as it is stated in the verses. Two, the present earth is different than its first state. There has been a gradual flattening from its edges in the course of time after a process. This occurs as a result of the rotation of the earth around its own axis. The conclusion that stems from the verses of the Quran of which we have analyzed is in complete coherence with the scientific discoveries. There is a reference for other scientific truths in the verses apart from these findings. One of them is that there is a loss of matter around the earth, though very little as a result of earth's rotation around its own axis. The statements in the verses as we reduce and we diminish indicate this loss of matter around the earth. Scientists confirmed this indication of the Quran and approved that there is a constant loss of matter around the earth, though very little. Here, these verses are also related to the decrease of land from another aspect. The scientists of Goddard Space Science Institute of Manhattan discovered that the level of water had been increasing as a result of the melting of ice sheets at the poles. The increased level of water also covers more land. As the coasts are covered with water, the total surface area or the quantity of land also diminishes. Therefore, the statements of the verses as we reduce and we diminish also indicate the coasts being covered with water and the reducing of land on the earth. Now, let us think about this matter. It was not possible for the people who lived in the age of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to know these scientific truths that are informed in these verses. You can even see that you cannot receive any answer from the people who are not really interested in physics when you ask them subjects such as whether a matter is flattened from its poles when it turns around its axis or not, or about the diminishing of land on the earth, the flattening of the poles, and the loss of matter on earth. 
This information is hardly known by any people except those who have a special interest in physics or the formation of Earth nowadays. So, how can you explain that this information exists in the Quran, which was revealed 14 centuries ago? If we attribute this book to an illiterate person, then what will we say about the scientific discoveries of this book? Did this person discover these scientific facts, which have recently been discovered in our age, on his own, 14 centuries ago? Then, is there any other option than the Quran is the word of Allah? No way! The discovery of the Quran's scientific miracles in our age is an aid and support of Allah to believers against the increased attacks on religion. Today, the secrets of space and earth have been revealed much more so both the art of Allah and the Quran's miraculous declarations are understood much better. Yes, the Quran reads the universe for those who know how to listen. In verse 41 of the chapter of al ankabut the following is stated. The parable, the parable of those who, those take, who protectors take protectors other than, other than Allah, Allah is that is of that the spider, of spider who builds, who builds to itself, to itself a, house. a house. But truly the flimsiest of houses is the spider's house, if they but knew. There are two important points in this verse. The first one is as follows. The word of Ankabut in the verse is referred to the female spider. The word of Itahazit is the feminine conjugation of the verb that means build for itself. The masculine conjugation of this verb is Itahaz. Allah Almighty states that the house of the spider is made by the female spider by using the feminine conjugation of the verb. Here, this indication of femininity expressed by the Quran on this issue exposes another miracle. It is as follows. As a result of the researches on animals, very interesting results on spiders have been reached. One of them is that the house of the spider is made not by the male spider, but the female spider. The result that the science has reached is in complete harmony with the news of the Quran. The Quran states that the house of the spider is made by the female spider and science approves this and accepts that it is true. The second important point in the verse is as follows. Another piece of information on spiders that has been acquired is as follows. In a large section of animals, males are bigger and stronger than females. 
Spiders are among the minority of the living creatures in which females are bigger than males. Generally, living species build their houses in order to protect themselves from heat, cold, enemies, and any kind of harm. However, the spider builds its house in order to destroy, harm, and eat those who visit its house by mistake. Thus, the house of the spider is the most insecure of all houses. The female spider also eats its male after copulating with it. Thus, the house of female spiders is insecure for its male, let alone others. If the male spider cannot be among the successful males who can escape after copulation, the house of its female will become his grave. With the flimsiness of the house of the spider, the Quran intends to express this figurative meaning. So, the Quran reveals another miracle by stating both that the house of the spider is built by its female and that the flimsiest house of all is the house of the spider. The Quran mentions many issues from the expansion of space to the atmosphere of the earth being a protective roof from the waves under the seas to the seas not mixing with one another. From the orbits of stars to the house of the spider being built by the female and the flimsiness of this house. The Quran never makes any mistakes in any fields, though it gives information about such different issues. On the contrary, it exhibits miracles that amaze people whose eyes and hearts are not blinded in all fields. It is impossible for an illiterate man who lived 14 centuries ago to know and mention all of these things on his own. Then the Quran can only be the book of the being that created the universe. For the Quran miraculously mentions everything that the book of the universe includes and all of its news turns out to be true. He who has he who sent has down sent water, down from, water the sky, from the sky, with it with have we have produced we divers, divers pairs, pairs of plants, of plants each, separate each separate from the others. From the others. Fruit, of, Fruit every of every kind, kind he made, he made in, pairs, in pairs, two, two and two. two. These verses of the Quran state that plants are created in pairs and indicates a great truth which was discovered only in the 20th century. It is as follows. The root of the words as watch and zojini. Used in the verses is the word zoch. While the word of as watch is the plural form of zoch, the word of zojini is the dual form of zoch, and zoch means spouse. We understand from these explanations that the Quran states through its verses that the plants are created in pairs and there is masculinity and femininity in plants, too. What do scientists say about this subject? Is there masculinity and femininity in plants, really? Now let us see the words of scientists. As a result of the studies made on plants, it is understood that there is masculinity and femininity in plants as well, and with the help of these different organs, reproduction occurs in plants. 
There are male and female reproduction cells in flowering and seedy plants. These cells are produced by the male and female organs, both of which are in the middle of the flower. In the tumid part of the female organ, called ovary, there are small and round seed ovules, and within them there are female reproduction cells too. The male reproduction cells are hidden inside the pollens produced by the anther of the male organ. While pollens, which are very light, are carried from one flower to another through winds or various animals, some of them cling on the vertex of the female organ. Afterwards, this pollen grain moves downwards from the stylus and reaches the ovules of the ovaries through a tube. The male reproduction cell passes from this tube and unites with the female reproduction cell in the ovule. When male and female reproduction cells unite, ovules are formed and then seeds are formed from them. Now, let us think of the following point. Biology was not a developed branch of science during the era of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The reproduction of plants and the role of the female and male elements in this field were not known. With the development of the science of biology and botany, the existence of male and female cells in seeding and flowering plants was understood botanists were able to discover the difference of gender in plants only 100 years ago. Then how did a person who did not know how to read or write manage to know that there was masculinity and femininity in plants at a time when people were not aware of botany or biology? This question can have only one answer. It is as follows that person did not know in its own. He knew it because Allah, who creates pears from plants, informed him of it. If this answer is not accepted, we will never be able to explain that person's informing of scientific facts and his news turning out to be true. No one's mind can accept that a person who did not know how to read or write was able to discover a fact 1400 years ago on his own and write it in a book, though the fact was discovered only 100 years ago by people who spent all of their lives studying biology and botany. A person who accepts this cannot be considered sane. There is only one answer that human minds can accept. The Quran is the book of Allah.